there, my name is Anson Koshi and I'm a developmental and behavioral pediatrician, but I'm also a painter. I love painting portraits and it's a lot of fun. You can see some of my uh, portraits and the work I'm working on right now behind me. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna walk you through some basics of how to draw a face. Um, and we're gonna start by looking at probably the most famous painting of a portrait in the world. Do you know what that might be? Can you think of a famous painting of a portrait? It's pretty old um, that kind of everyone has heard about. What if I've told you that the painter who did it was Italian and his name was Leonardo da Vinci? Can you figure it out now? Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, um, I would say that the most famous portrait in the world is that of the Mona Lisa. So fortunately, we're not gonna paint the Mona Lisa because that would be really difficult. Do you know how long da Vinci spent on this painting? If you had to guess, would you say a couple days, a couple months? What if I told you he spent three years painting this? Um, pretty impressive, right? So we don't have that much time and I don't think you wanna spend three years with me painting on this video but we're gonna quickly learn a little bit about how do you draw a face, um, and then I'm gonna task you guys with painting your own portrait, okay? So let's get started. So one of the things you're going to need to prepare for our drawing lesson is a photo reference of yourself. Um, and so one thing I want you to do is we're gonna look at the Mona Lisa together and use it as an example before you get that project started. So what's interesting about this painting is not just that it's a person, but where she's placed. Uh, da Vinci has a very interesting background. She's wearing very specific clothing. She even has a little bit of a veil over her hair. So there's a lot of questions the portrait is kind of making us ask. So you can tell a story by all of those things, uh, what the subject is wearing and what's in the background. So one of the things you would want to do as you prepare a photo reference for yourself is think about what story do you want to share. Do you want to share where you see yourself in 5, 10, 20 years or when you're a fully grown adult, what you're going to do in your career? Do you want to tell a different story about something really exciting that happened to you? Well then think about the background and think about the clothing. You can always adjust that. So what I did is I had a selfie that I tweaked a little bit. And so as you can see, there's some important things you need to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out a picture um, that you're going to use. So just like the Mona Lisa, we really want your face to be facing forward to the camera lens. Um, we don't want your head tilted sideways or even slightly turned. It makes it a little bit harder. The Mona Lisa was slightly turned, but it's pretty much uh, forward facing. And so that's what you want to do or where mostly your face is in the photo. Um, I have a cowboy hat on because we're in Texas, so that makes it interesting. I love yellow, so um, that's why I picked this uh, photo, and I love the yellow shirt. And I added in a background of some leaves. So just to create a little more interest as opposed to just me in a boring shirt. Um, so figure out how you want to make your reference photo. If you have a picture you're using, you can always just find a different background and have that side by side so you have something you can work off of. Um, but think about what clothing you're going to wear or maybe what hat you're going to add in after. And it doesn't all have to be in the photo, you can always add it in later. Um, so just think about that and remember that there's much more than just the face that's telling the story in your portrait. So we're gonna hopefully um, show you some basics on how to draw a face. 
um, and the proportions um, are really interesting when it comes to drawing a face because there's some rough estimations you can make and that's what those worksheets are going to show you which you can look at as well as a reference. So when you're starting to draw a face, um, the first thing is you want to kind of think about the, the shape of the face. And usually it's an oval, some faces are a little more square, some are a little bit more round, but we can keep things pretty basic to start. So um, start by just using a light touch with your pencil. Um, part of it is um, I'm a big fan of erasers. You don't have to get everything right the first go round, but the lighter you draw initially, you can always go back in and make darker um, lines uh, once you're comfortable with where everything is uh, placed. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to lightly sketch a guide. And so you want to kind of draw the oval shape of the face. So I um, kind of lightly did it in earlier. So I'm going to go in a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully, awesome, you can see that. Um, a little bit darker too. And so we're gonna make that oval shape. And so I have um, my reference here. Um, and so you can always look at your reference photo to make sure you're getting the shape overall. And my, as you can see, my base shape is pretty oval. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of get that in there. And then once you get that in, you can always go back and make little adjustments. I think that's one of the, the most important things that I learned about drawing is lots of little adjustments make the difference. You don't have to get it right in the first go around. Okay. So now that you can see we kind of have a shape going on for the face, um, the next thing is you're just gonna draw, literally cut it in half. You're gonna draw a line right down the center and then right down the center um, uh, going um, horizontally and vertically. So if we were to do that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do mine really dark so you can see it, um, but you don't have to go as dark when you're drawing it. So we're kind of getting a, a center line, and then you're literally gonna cut the whole thing in half. Um, so you kind of have to eyeball it a little bit. And these are just your guidelines, okay? Um, it's helpful because this is actually, like it's interesting when you think about the face, um, I often think we put the eyes up higher than they should be, but it really is right where that half point is going across. Um, that's really where your eye line is gonna be. Um, so you've divided it into two. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take this division line and you're going to divide this into halves, right? So we're going to find where's the center point between here and here, and we're going to say it's like right there. We're going to say where's the center point between here and here, and we're going to say it's like right there. Um, and so again, following off your worksheet. Um, then you're going to take this section um, from the midpoint horizontally to the bottom, and you're going to cut it in half and you're going to draw a line right there and that line is going to be the base of the nose then you're going to take the section from that line to this line and cut it in half and we're going to get back to that one shortly so we've got the whole face cut into a t um, so essentially a cross then we've cut this section into a half this section into a half we cut this section into a half there, and then we took this section and cut it into a half. And so we're kind of getting a really interesting face. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw eyes. Um, and so you're gonna use this as the center point of the eye. Um, and this line is gonna give you the guide of where the eye sits, or essentially when your eyes are closed, where that line would fall. And so you can kind of draw that shape in here. You're gonna draw this shape in here. You can do the same thing over here. And again, keep it fairly rough and light. Um, kind of looks a little bit robotic at this point, but don't worry, we're gonna go back in and do the details. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a straight line um, from the brow um, all the way down to give you a guide of where the nose is. So it's literally drawing a line from the end of the eyebrow and it tells you where your nose ends. Really interesting, so we're gonna do that here. And so we did the eyes, so we're gonna just kind of make an eyebrow above it eyebrow above it, and then we're going to draw a line essentially um, straight. There we go. So a line from the end of the brow on the inside down to the nose, um, from the end of the brow on one side down to the nose, and so we get where our end of our nostrils are going to be. Um, then you're going to draw a short line um, to form the bottom of the nose, and that will be here. So I'm looking at my nose there, and it um, that's a nice thing with iPad, you can zoom in 
kind of is a little curved, right? And so another tip I have about when you're looking at a picture and trying to draw a face is don't tell yourself, oh, I'm drawing someone's face, I'm drawing someone's face. Break it down into shapes. And so instead of saying, oh, I'm drawing someone's nose, well, my nose, what I would be thinking is, okay, so I'm drawing kind of like a curved or scalloped edge with like one, two, three curves on it. And so that way you're not necessarily thinking it's a nose, you're just looking for shapes and you're just gonna draw shapes. That's so much easier than thinking, oh, I'm gonna draw a nose. So if I were to do that, it would kind of be um, a little curved there, little curve here, right in the middle. So we got a curve there, curve there, and then we got a last curve, which is going out there. Awesome. And then this bottom line is going to be essentially um, the mouth line. So it'll essentially when you close your lips, um, what that shape looks like. So if I were to look at the photo, um, you can kind of see another great way to think about what's the proportions or where should you place it is if you look at where the pupil is and you draw a straight line, you should end up at the corner of the mouth. So if I were to go from my pupil to the end of my mouth, straight line, it tells you how wide the mouth should be. So we, let's just say the pupil is here. We're gonna go down, we're gonna go down, and that'll give you the corners of the mouth. And then um, kind of see my lips, I'm trying to draw the top lip, and then I'll draw the bottom lip. And I can already tell um, I don't have enough space here, so I may have to make my chin a little bit longer. So not the prettiest, but that's okay. That's where we get started. Um, and now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then I'll show you where I'm at in a few minutes, okay? So why don't you work on yours and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I've done some sketching. I cleaned some things up. Um, and you can see I'm getting a little bit closer um, to the face there. Um, and I just wanna kind of show you where I'm at so far. So a couple of things is I realize it's not perfect, right? And so that's okay. Um, imperfections are what make things interesting, but I realized some of the shape was a little bit off, so I keep making small adjustments and erasing as I go. So that's really key. A couple of other quick tips when you're drawing eyes um, and the nose and the lips is always think about the shape. Um, and sometimes it's not the shape we always think about. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can get a close up of my eye. Um, and I think what's interesting here that you need to pay attention to is we're not going to necessarily just draw everything out, um, like draw the big circle, draw the other circle. You want to pay attention to like, oh, okay, so I have this much of my, the whites of my eyes are showing. So it's good to pay attention to that space in between. So not just the outline, but oh, there's a white part here, it looks like that. There's a white part here, it looks like that. And then there's a white part in the center. So kind of breaking the eye into smaller pieces um, helps to kind of find some of those subtle nuances. Um, so I'm gonna work on this a little bit more and we'll get back to it, okay? So here we are, I feel like I'm at a good uh, point where I'm gonna start cleaning and adding in more details. Um, I'm a painter, I love to paint, so what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna apply paint to this and that's gonna take me some time. Um, but I'm hoping you're at a point where you're able to kind of clean up and start to kind of see some similar similarities to yourself. I want you to keep in mind, it doesn't have to look exactly like you, that's not the goal. This is meant to be fun. Um, and the more you work on it, the more you practice, the better you'll be. Um, I'm at a place where I think I'm gonna paint. I love painting, um, but you can use um, just pencil um, and you can have it just basically be uh, a pencil drawing. You could add ink to it. You could use markers. If you love to paint, you can throw paint on there. Um, you can use uh, colored pencils, whatever your preferred medium is, um, but just have fun. That's the big takeaway. Um, Hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something new. 
Um, I had a really good time showing you guys this. I'm actually really happy with where I'm at. So I actually learned something too, that I could do this really quickly if I needed to. So thank you for teaching me that. And I hope you guys had fun. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.